Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let us gather and pray together in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to, and to you, you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without your mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain of heights of Israel, I will plant it, it shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree and make the withered tree blue as i the lord have spoken so will i do the word of the lord thanks be to god lord it is good to give thanks to you lord it is good to give thanks to you it is good to give thanks to the lord to sing praise to your name, Most High, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock, in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, 
whether good or evil. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all the seed will sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wills the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a master seed, when it is so, sown in the ground, in the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Salamat sa mahal na bera ng Antipolo sapagkat kundi dahil sa kanya, hindi ako makapagmimisa dito sa Manila Cathedral. Pakiramdam ko, pwede na akong makremate after this Mass. Nakapagmisa na ako sa Mother of All Churches, sa ina ng mga simbahan sa Pilipinas. Mga kapatid, Narito ang bire ng Antipolo dahil sa biyahe ng kasaysayan ngayong panahon ng pilgrimage season sa Antipolo. Sa pambansang dambana ng bire ng kapayapaan at mabuting paglalakbay. Simula pa noong June 10 hanggang sa June 18, mananatili dito ang Birhen ng Antipolo. At ayon sa kasaysayan, dalawang mahalagang event sa simbahan kung saan nanatili siya dito sa Manila Cathedral. Nung 
yung isa ay nung December 1904, nung pinagniwang ang golden anniversary ng dogma ng Immaculate Conception. Ikalawa, noong November 28, 1926, pagkatapos ng kanyang canonical coronation sa Luneta, dinala din siya dito sa Manila Cathedral bilang bahagi ng pagnunubina, pagpapasalamat sa Kanya. Kaya lumalabas, mga kapatid, after 95 years, bumalik dito sa Manila Cathedral ang Birhen ng Antipolo. Ang milagrosang imahen ng mahal na Birhen ng Antipolo ang ina nating mga Pilipino. Palakpakan naman natin ang mahal na Birhen. Ngayon po ay 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. At narinig natin sa Ibanghelyo ayon kay San Marcos ang tungkol sa kaharian ng Diyos, ang tungkol sa Kingdom of God. At pinapaliwanag ito sa atin ng ating Panginoong si Kristo sa pamamagitan ng mga talinghaga. Dalawang talinghaga ang ginamit niya upang ilarawan ang kaharian ng Diyos. Isa na taong naghasik ng binhi. At ikalawa, yung buto na pinakamaliit, ang buto ng mustasa. Diyan niya nilalarawan at nais niyang ihalintulad ang kaharian ng Diyos. Pero bago yun, mga kapatid, alam natin kapag pinag-usapan ang kaharian ng Diyos, kasama diyan una at higit sa lahat ang misteryo ng pag-ibig ng Diyos Ama. Ang misteryo ng pangiral ng, ng Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Ikalawa, pag pinag-usapan din ang, pag ang kaharian ng Diyos, kasama diyan ang pagkakatawang tao ng bugtong na anak ng Diyos. Kasama diyan ang pagpapakasakit, pagkamatay at muling pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoong si Kristo. Na sa pamamagitan niya, hindi ba sinabi sa atin, Dumating na ang kaharian ng Diyos. Sumaati ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating Panginoong Kristo. Kapag pinag-usapan ang kaharian ng Diyos, kasama din diyan ang gampanin at tungkuli ng banal na spiritu na nagpapabanal na tumutulong, gumagabay sa atin bilang isang simbahan sa ating kapanahunan. Kaya nga pag sinabing kaharian ng Diyos, ito'y misteryo ng pag-ibig ng Diyos sa atin. Ito'y misteryo at aktwal na karanasan natin bilang mga tao. Sinasabi na narito na ang kaharian ng Diyos dahil sa ating Panginoong si Kristo. Pero ang kaganapan nito ay sa buhay na walang hanggan. Ngayon ang sabi ng ating Panginoong Yesus, ito daw kaharian ng Diyos na ito, itong pag-ibig ng Diyos na ito na nagliligtas sa atin mga kapatid, ay katulad ng paghahasik ng binhi ng isang tao at natulog siya at magising araw at gabi. Tumutubo ang binhi ng hindi niya namamalayan. Tumutubo ang halaman na hindi niya napapansin o wala siyang kinalaman sa paglago at paglaki ng halamang ito. Noong kasagsagaan ng pandemya last 2020, marami sa atin ang nagsulputan ng mga plantito at plantita. Marami sa atin ang nagtanim ng halaman Nagtanim ng gulay sa kanika nilang tahanan. 
Nadamay po ako doon. Nagpaturo po ako ng hydroponic garden. Nagtanim din po ako ng lettuce. Ang sabi na nagturo, maghihintay lang ako ng 21 to 25 days. Pag naitanim na, harvest time na. Totoo, naranasan ko at naranasan siguro ng mga plantita at plantito na wala tayong kinalaman sa paglaki ng halaman, sa paglaki ng lettuce. Makikita na lang natin siya araw-araw tumutubo, lumalaki ng kanya. Ganyan daw, mga kapatid, ang kaharian ng Diyos. Hindi tayo ang may kontrol sa paghahari ng Diyos. Ang Diyos mismo ang in control sa kanyang kaharian. Dahil ito'y kanyang pag-ibig, dahil ito'y kanyang kaharian, siya lang ang pwedeng makakontrol at nakakaalam ng lahat ng nangyayari sa kanyang kaharian, sa kanyang paghahari sa mundo at sa kabilang buhay. Kung minsan, akala nating mga tao, kaya nating kontrolin ng kaharian ng Diyos. Kaya nating kontrolin ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kaya natin at gusto nating kontrolin ng Diyos. Marami sa atin, umamin man tayo sa hindi. Akala natin, kapantay natin ang Diyos. Pero ang totoo, hindi natin kapantay ang Diyos, mga kapatid, at hindi natin kayang pantayan ng Diyos kahit ano pang mangyari at kahit saan pa tayo makarating, mananatiling God is in control of everything. Tayo ay nakikibahagi lang sa kaharian ng Diyos. Hindi ba yan ang isang biyaya ngayong panahon ng pandemya na nakita natin wala palang magagawa yung ating pera, wala palang magagawa yung ating kapangyarihan, wala palang magagawa yung ating kasikatan, wala palang magagawa yung ating kayabangan sa harap ng isang virus, sa harap ni COVID-19. Kung iaalalahanin nyo, bago magpandemya, sobra-sobra ang ating kayabangan, Sobra-sobra ang ating pagmamalaki. Sobra-sobra ang akala natin, kaya natin planuhin ang lahat ng bagay. Pero nung magpandemya, nung simula ng 2020, napahiya tayong lahat. Lalong-lalo na yung mga mayayabang, lalong-lalo na yung mga nagmumura sa Diyos, lumalait sa Diyos at sa simbahan lalong-lalo na yung mga lumalait sa buhay at gustong pumatay ng buhay. Napahiya tayo. Lahat pala tayo ay kayang takutin at sindakin ng isang virus lang. At hindi ba hanggang ngayon, nababalo tayong lahat ng takot, nabawasan ng ating kayabangan, nabawasan ng ating pagmamalaki na hindi nga natin alam kung bukas sino ang magpapositive at mamamatay. Hindi nga natin alam sa ating pamilya kung sino ang mawawala at kukunin sa panahong ito ng pandemya. Yan ang paghahari ng Diyos. Wala tayong kontrol. Siya ang may kontrol, hindi tayo. Pero merong magandang mapupulot tayo sa unang talinghaga kung bakit tayo ang pinagkatiwalaan ng Diyos na maghasik ng binhi. Sa kabila ng ating mga kahinaan, sa kabila ng kapalpakan ng mga tao, mga kapatid, 
tayo ang pinagkatiwalaan. Ang sabi ng talinghaga, inahasik ito ng isang tao sa makatuwid kahit kontrolado ng Diyos. Tayo po bilang mga tao, mga kapatid, ay katuwang ng Diyos sa paghahasik ng pag-ibig niya, sa paghahasik ng binhi ng salita ng Diyos, sa paghahasik ng katotohanan sa ating mundo. Na bilang mga tao, ito ang napakalaking biyaya at pagpapala ng Diyos sa atin. Hindi pera, hindi kayamanan, hindi kapangyarihan kundi yung tiwala ng Diyos. Bilang mga binyagan, tayo'y pinagkakatiwalaan ng Diyos, mga kapatid, para maghasik ng binhi ng Kanyang pag-ibig. At ano mangyayari kung tayo daw ay pagagamit sa salita ng Diyos at sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, makakatulad tayo ng butil ng mustasa na napakaliit pero pag ito'y lumago, kapag ito'y tumubo, ito'y mamumunga ng sagana, lalaki at lalago, magiging puno. Hindi ba ganun din ang sinabi sa unang pagbasa sa aklat ni Ezekiel na simula sa usbong, simula sa sanga, kapag ito'y tumubo, ito'y magiging puno, ito'y magiging kalugod-lugod na puno na kayang pagsilungan ng mga tao, na kayang gamitin para sa buhay ng mga tao, magiging isang punong kasiyasaya at kalugod-lugod. Katuwang tayo, mga kapatid, ng Diyos sa pagpapahayag ng Kanyang pag-ibig. Ano man daw po ang gawin natin na maliit, ano man daw po ang gawin natin na bagay alang-alang at sa pangalan ni Jesus, ito'y bahagi ng pagpapalaganap ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Anong sabi ni Cardinal Rosales sa pondo ng Pinoy? Kahit maliit, basta malimit, ito'y patungong langit. Ito'y patungo sa kaharian ng Diyos. Kapag gumagawa ka daw ng kahit maliit sa iyong kapwa, yung mag-abot ka lang ng tinapay sa iyong kapwa na nagugutom, yung tumulong ka lang sa iyong kapwa na ngayon ay stress na stress, yung makinig ka lang sa iyong kapwa na depressed na at gusto nang magpakamatay dahil sa pandemya, yung magpakain ka sa mga nagugutom katulad ng ginawa sa mga pantry ginawa sa mga karitas sa mga dioceses at mga parokya ginagawa sa mga damayan sa mga simbahan yun mga kapatid ay pagpapakita at pagtuwang sa pagpapahayag ng kaharian ng Diyos akala niyo Itong ginagawa nating pagsisimba linggo-linggo, kung ito'y nakikita ng inyong mga anak, nasa tahanan man kayo o nasa katedral, o nasa simbahan, kung ginagawa nyo ng tama ang pagsisimba at isinasabuhay natin ang pagsisimba, napakalaking bagay nito mga kapatid sa pakikibahagi sa pagpapahayag ng kaharian ng Diyos. Sabi ni San Pablo sa ikalawang pagbasa, mabuhay daw tayo ng may pananampalataya na hindi lamang sa nakikita ng ating mga mata. Kailangan natin, lalong-lalo na ngayong panahon, mga kapatid, ang pananampalataya. Lalong-lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya upang patuloy tayong makabahagi upang patuloy po tayong makatuwang ng Diyos ng kanyang pag, ng pagpapahayag ng kanyang kaharian dito sa mundo. Alam ko, 
at alam nating lahat kung paanong takot tayong mamatay yung iba sa atin nang hihina rin ang pananampalataya. Alam natin, aminin man natin sa hindi, yung iba sa atin nagdududa sa kanyang pananampalataya, lalo na siguro kung namatay ang kananang mahal sa buhay ngayong pandemic. Lalo-lalo na siguro kung minsan nag-positive ka na at akala mo katapusan mo na. Mga kapatid, kailangan natin ng mas malakas na kapangyarihan kaysa coronavirus. At yun ay nanggagaling sa ating Panginoong si Kristo. Kailangan natin ang ating pananampalataya, lalong-lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya at sa mga darating na panahon. Huwag tayong bibitaw sa Diyos. Huwag tayong bibitaw sa ating simbahan. Huwag tayong bibitaw kay Kristo na mapagmahal at mapagpatawad. Kailangan natin siya. Kailangan natin ng Diyos. Aminin natin yan sa ating mga sarili. At anuman ang ating gawin, hanggang saan man ang ating buhay bilang mga binyagan, gamitin po natin ito bilang pagtulong, bilang pagtuwang at pakikibahagi sa pagpapalaganap ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Lahat naman tayo mamamatay. Kung hindi man tayo makasama sa panahon ng pandemya, tandaan po ninyo, lahat tayo ay may katapusan. Huwag natin sayangin ang ating buhay, mga kapatid. Huwag natin sayangin ang biyaya na pinagkaloob sa atin ng Diyos bilang mga binyagan na tayo'y makabahagi sa pagpapalaganap ng Kanyang pag-ibig at kaligtasan sa mundo. Yun siguro ang pinakamasarap na mangyari sa atin na habang tayo nabubuhay, na natili tayong katuwang ng Diyos sa katotohanan at sa Kanyang pag-ibig. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Like a great tree with flourishing branches, or like seed quietly growing, so the kingdom of God increases. We make our prayers together as our share in that loving plan of divine providence. Let the response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the growing church on earth, that it may welcome and redeem the cultures and values of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For leaders whose plans is influence the economy, that they may encourage and support farmers 
and all those who help bring food to our table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop the land, that as they make this earth more productive, so may they reverence the natural environment created by God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that we may grow in grace as we welcome people to the life of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, that they may live forever in the courts of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Almighty God, you are the source of all goodness and grace. Hear these prayers we make as our intention, intercession for others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, and renewing us your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail in us, body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, He freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, He gave us eternal life. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks and held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Roderick, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Anthony of Padua, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace is the grand peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, he said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am, I am not, not worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so it may bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Salve Regina
Magsilhot po tayong lahat at dasalin po natin ang panalangin sa mahal na Birhen ng Antipolo. Mahal na ina at reyna ng mag-anak na Pilipino, pangalagaan mo ang mga ama ng tahanan na may katungkulang itaguyod ang kanilang mag-anak. Ilayo mo sila sa kasalanan at bigyan ng lakas upang mapaglabanan ang mga ito. At gayon din naman igawad mo sa amin ang ninanasa namin at hinihingi sa pagsisiyam na ito. Kung ito'y ukol sa kapurihan ng Diyos at kagalingan ng kaluluwa namin. Amen. Please be seated. Bago po natin tanggapin ang pagbabasbas, nais ko pong magpasalamat sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa Banal na Misa ngayong umagang ito at sa pagpunta dito sa Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat din po sa mga matsyagang tumayo sa labas at sa likod para lamang makadalo sa ating Banal na Misa. At salamat po sa inyong cooperation sa ating mga health protocols. We also wish to thank those who are joining the live streaming of this Mass. Thank you very much for being part of the online community of the Manila Cathedral and for your continued support for the missions of the Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat din po sa ating mga Manila Cathedral staff and volunteers, servants who are helping us, helping us and serving at this Mass in order to see to it that all of us are safe as we worship God through the Eucharist. Salamat din po lalong lalo na sa namuno sa ating misa ngayon, ang rektor at parish priest ng National Shrine of Our Lady of Antipolo sa Antipolo City, si Father Ray Nante Tolentino. Palakbakan po natin si Father Nante. Si Father Nante po at ako ay magkasamang sakristan nung kami bata-bata pa sa aming bayan, sa Anggono Rizal. Ngayon po ay pareho kami rektor ng dalawang katedral ng Immaculate Conception sa Antipolo at dito sa Manila. At nagpapasalamat po ako kay Father Nante, kay Bishop Francis de Leon, ang obispo ng Antipolo, sa napakalaking karangalan na madala dito sa Manila Cathedral ang imahe ng Birhen ng Antipolo at manatili dito sa loob ng siyam na araw. At sa darating kong biyernes, no, June 18, ay ipagdiriwang natin yung 395th anniversary ng arrival ng imahe ng Birhen ng Antipolo sa Pilipinas. Kaya dito rin gagawin ang banal na misa sa espesyal na araw na iyon. Tunay na makasaysayan ang pagdalaw na ito ng mahal na ina. Kaya nagpapasalamat din ako kay Father Nante sa pagkakataong ito. No? Bago man lamang matapos ang termino ko bilang rektor ng Manila Cathedral, ay nadalaw ako dito ng mahal na birhen ng Antipolo. Maraming salamat sa uh, mga naglingkod sa ating altar servers na mula rin sa um, our uh, National Shrine of Our Lady of Antipolo. Sa darating pong Martes, June 15, ay pasisimula natin ang ating novina, no, siyam na araw ng pagdarasal, bilang paghahanda para sa pagdating ng bagong arsobispo ng Maynila, si Cardinal Jose Advincula. At inaanyayahan po tayo dito sa Archdiocese of Manila na paghandaan ang pagsisimula ng isang bagong yugtong ito sa ating buhay bilang isang simbahan sa pamamagitan ng spiritual preparations sa loob ng siyam na araw. Kaya inanyayahan po namin kayo na sumabay sa ating spiritual preparation na ito araw-araw simula Martes, no June 15 hanggang June 23 bilang paghahanda para sa installation ni Cardinal Advincula sa June 24. Nawa po sa pamamagitan ng ating mga online masses, ng live streaming ng ating mga pagdiriwang, ay makasabay tayo sa paghahandang ito na kinapapalooban ng tatlong elemento, panalangin, katesismo. Ito'y panahon din po para balikan ng ating katesismo tungkol sa simbahan at sa ating bahagi bilang mga laiko sa simbahan 
at paggawa ng kabutihan. No? Ito po yung pangatatlong elemento ng ating novena in preparation for the coming of our new Archbishop. And so we invite you to join with us in these nine days so that we will be spiritually prepared when we all welcome with great joy the coming of our new Archbishop. Muli po sa inyong lahat, maraming salamat po at nawa ay pagpalain ng Diyos itong bagong linggo na ating haharapin pagkalooban niya tayo ng lakas at biyaya at kaligtasan upang tayo'y makasamba sa Kanya at makapagmahal sa ating kapwa. Let us now stand and receive the final blessing. Bago po yung final blessing, nais ko rin personally magpasalamat sa aking kababayan sa Anggono, sa aking kapwa sa Kristan sa Anggono, ang rektor ng Manila Katedral at Paris Priest, si Father Reggie Malikdem. Father, salamat po. At salamat din kay Father Kali, na kasamang pari na naglilingkod dito sa Manila Katedral. Sa inyo rin pong lahat, maraming maraming salamat po. At wag natin kakalimutan, mga kapatid, ang paalala sa atin ng Ibanghelyo. God is in control. Kaharian niya to, kaya siya ang bahala. Pero tayo bilang mga pinagkatiwalaan ng binhilang salita ng Diyos at ng Kanyang pag-ibig, gawin natin ang ating katungkulan. Huwag po nating sayangin ang pribileyo na ito na binigay ng Diyos. Bawat araw, maghasik tayo ng pag-ibig at katotohanan. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Yeah.